To the subject of free energy, there's a lot of skeptics out there, and by free energy, I'm talking about over unity devices. And so, obviously, you'd expect there to be a lot of skeptics. So, here at the Infinity Channel, we thought we'd make a video specifically for those skeptics. Now, I would highly recommend any skeptics, first of all, to watch a video which is called It Runs on Water, which is a documentary about Stanley Meyer who invented a water-powered car and by water-powered car I mean a car which uses water as, as a fuel uh, unlike conventional electrolysis of water he actually managed to get more energy out than he had to use to split the hydrogen and oxygen and most so-called scientists these days would immediately say oh that breaks the law of thermodynamics because you can't get more energy out of a system than what was already there and a perfect example of one of those scientists is Frank Close who you'll see in the video um, you can watch the video it's in our playlist if you go to our channel it's called the infinity channel on YouTube and you look at our playlists, we've got a free energy playlist and there's a documentary there called It Runs on Water. If you watch that video, you'll see Frank Close, who's a professor at Oxford University in England, and you will see him explaining to you why it is that he thinks Stanley Meyer's invention is not worth looking at. Yeah, so first of all, watch that documentary in full. Watch it from the beginning to the end. And you'll see what seems to make perfect sense. Stanley Meyer invented something. He got it patented. He made, experimental, he made an experimental car that worked. You'll also see on the video Frank Close, a professor at Oxford University, who immediately um, kind of brushes off Stanley Meyer's inventions by saying things like one of the problems is the language people use. Frank Close says that one of the problems is that the language that Stanley Meyer uses because Stanley Meyer was not a, a graduate of a university. He studied science and electronics and engineering and then he invented his device. And then you have Frank Close, who's a professor at Oxford University, saying that he can't look at, he can't look at Stanley Meyer's invention at all because Stanley Meyer doesn't use the same language as him, and that's apparently a scientific response from a professor of Oxford University. Now, I mean, the thing I would say to any skeptic is, how would you expect a, sci a, a real scientist to react? to somebody who's made an invention like a water-powered car would you expect them to say oh that's very interesting you know I'd like to go and visit him in his laboratory and I'd like to see how that works and I'd like to test it and you know understand the science behind it or would you expect them to say oh that scientist doesn't speak the same language as me so therefore I'm going to completely ignore his invention I mean, that's the equivalent of somebody, you know, saying, uh, oh, there's an inventor in China who invented something, but I don't speak Chinese, so I'm not interested in that invention. I mean, that's obviously either a lie, or he, Frank Close has obviously either been told to say that by somebody, or he's lying, or he's a completely incompetent scientist, because no serious scientist would react like that to, to, to something as amazing as Stanley Meyer's invention. But there's another clue in one of his other responses. It's, he says, if I was to apply for funding for something like this, who would I be competing with? So there he's, there's a little sort of tell that he, he knows perfectly well that 
the, probably the device does work, but obviously it would cut into the profits of the oil companies, so therefore he's not interested. Another example of how flawed that kind of thinking is, is that it, if you imagine somebody got a uh, bucket of oil or something and they, and they put some kind of uh, mineral or vegetable juice into it and it somehow reacted and created this kind of really exotic type of plastic that had amazing properties and was very stretchy and uh, you know it was really useful somehow and you and you told some scientists about it I mean w would you imagine that the scientists would say oh you know you, you can't explain that to us in in the, in the kind of language that we want you to so we're just going to co completely ignore that I mean I think if you look through the history of scientific inventions I'm pretty sure that a lot of scientific inventions would have come from people that didn't speak the same scientific language. So I don't know what Frank Close, Frank Close's problem is exactly with that. It seems like he's lying, basically. Um, so yeah, so I would say to a skeptic, you know, watch that video. It runs on water, and then think to yourself. Why would it be that a professor of Oxford University would basically be in, would say on an interview something as ridiculous as, you know, Stanley Meyer doesn't speak the right kind of language, therefore I'm not interested in, in his invention? I mean, that just doesn't, that just doesn't cut it, basically. That's, that's either a lie or... He's been told to say that, or he's, or he's scared to admit that it might work. That's just one very clear example of how mainstream scientists are covering up real inventions that do work. Um, and you have to ask yourself, why is it that they're covering up those inventions? And, you know... Fair enough, yeah, it would cut into the profits of the oil companies. And is that a good enough reason to suppress that technology? You know, is hurting the profits of people like George Bush something that should stop um, incredibly revolutionary technology from coming out? Clean technology, which... You know, on, on the one hand, they're selling all this oil. On the other hand, they're telling everyone that they need to tax us more with carbon taxes. The, basically, the same people who are selling the oil are saying that, oh, there, aren't, there isn't any other clean technology like water technology. There's only our oil technology. And you're going to have to use it because we're going to cover up the science of the water technology. And then we're going to tax you even more because you're emitting carbon. Anyone that goes along with that is uh, basically uh, is committing a crime against humanity, as far as I'm concerned. You know, people like Frank Close should be ashamed of themselves for helping those kind of people to retain their, their control over the world through the economy and through energy. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing I would say to skeptics is that You can't, you can't um, underestimate how revolutionary it would be if something like this was accepted by everybody as being real. Um, take, for instance, Africa. Okay, if you could generate energy from water, and in fact, salty water, as it happens, is works even better. As it happens, salty water actually works better in these machines because salt is a conductor of electricity. So it's the same with any kind of electrolysis, is that salt will conduct the water better than just um, pure water. So if you consider a country like Africa, you know, there's no, there's no um, shortage of salt water in the sea in pretty much any country in the world. So you could have power stations all along the coastal areas of Africa. You could pump water all over the country. And the whole of Africa would be green and would have unlimited energy. But that would 
basically be the same in any country in the world. S skeptics will say things like, oh, you're some kind of paranoid conspiracy theorist because you think that um, there would be certain powerful people that would try and suppress this kind of technology. I mean, it's quite obvious, really, that if any of this technology is real, that the people that run all the oil companies would obviously suppress this technology and they would do everything they could to stop it from coming out because it would completely change the whole planet that we live on, change everything. And that's why it's so important that scientists actually look into this and not only scientists, it's important that people that can replicate it should replicate it and they should try and just get those devices out to as many people as possible so they can start using them because the amount of people who have invented a free energy device, particularly magnetic motors and stuff like that, but also the water engine. Well, Stanley Meyer ended up dead after eating in a restaurant um, and he tried to patent everything. But the, the amount of people who have tried to patent ideas and tried to make money from it, who end up getting absolutely nowhere, is incredible. I, I strongly think that the only way this technology is ever going to get out is if people just give that information out for free. They have to make a, a device which is fairly easy to replicate and then they need to get that information out to as many people as possible. I would recommend doing it via peer-to-peer -peer file sharing like torrents or something like that so that the information can get out to everyone around the world and it can't be suppressed. Another example was the company Stjorn, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Stone or something from Ireland and they they managed to get some media attention and they they wanted to they wanted to get funding they wanted to make money basically they organized a big event where lots of people came to see a demonstration and what do you know the device just didn't work that day and the uh, I can't remember his name but the guy the main guy behind Storm um, he seems slightly naive because I saw in one interview with him and he said that he was sort of surprised that he was getting emails from people threatening to beat him up and stuff. I was thinking, well, that's, that's the least, of, that should be the least of your concerns, you know. Someone will probably kill him if he's not careful. But, you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all if when he did that uh, um, demonstration that there was someone upstairs or downstairs with some kind of electromagnetic emitter or something which caused the machines not to work. He even said on, on a video that he thought it was the heat from the light bulbs stopped it from working. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if someone did something else to stop them from working. Um, so that's what happens when you try and make money from free energy. It seems like there is this there is this, um, you know, there is this atmosphere around free energy technology that anyone who tries to profit from it ends up getting nobbled somehow, and the ideas don't come out. Another famous inventor was John Christie and Lou Britz of Cairns, Australia, and they got into the media when they made a magnetic motor that was had over unity properties, and. Their company was called Lutec. Uh, they were in the media. They were looking for funding, and all of a sudden, I don't know what happened to them, but their website doesn't work anymore, and it's impossible to contact them. Another interesting device is from a company called Hydrodynamics, and they've got a website, hydrodynamics.com, and they invented a new type of water heater which has a disc with holes in it and it somehow turns the water and with the friction somehow makes the water hot and they noticed that the heat coming from the water had more energy than what it took to heat the water in the first place and I imagine that's something to do with the spinning of the water and uh, 
or maybe resonant frequencies, the same as Stanley Meyer's device. That's another another thing worth looking into. And you'll see on the documentary again that uh, some kind of expert, supposedly expert, came to look at their device, and he measured it, and he says on the video that he doesn't find any um, he doesn't find anything untrue with what they were claiming that it produced over unity effects he doesn't deny that but then he just instead focuses on the fact that their lab uh, wasn't set up in some kind of scientific way that he wanted it to be set up in so again you've got this kind of false um, sort of this false sort of impression created by these so-called experts that someone's invention is not somehow not not worthy of their attention because it, they haven't used the right kind of scientific setup that they say you should have. Yeah, the other the other thing that's important to say to you skeptics is why is it that it's so difficult to get your head around the idea that water could actually be used as a fuel? Whenever anyone mentions getting um, over unity from fuel from water. Uh, these scientists always say, oh, law of thermodynamics, law of thermodynamics, you know, you can't get more energy out of the water than, than, you, than you use to do the electrolysis to split the hydrogen and the oxygen. Well, when you burn petrol, you don't have to use the same amount of energy to burn the petrol as what you get out, because it's a fuel, obviously. So why is it that water cannot be considered to be a fuel in exactly the same, well not exactly the same way, but you have to use a different way to liberate the stored energy in the water that you would use to liberate the energy in the petrol. Why can't there be a different process to liberate energy from something? To me it seems to be quite an obvious aspect of science and scientific thinking that you should be open to the fact that there might be a new way of doing something that hasn't previously been discovered. So I don't understand why these scientists find it so difficult to imagine the idea that the stored energy in water can't be liberated in some way just as the same way as when you burn petrol you liberate the energy in the petrol. I don't understand why that's so difficult for them to get their head around. Um, plenty of things haven't been discovered before. I mean, people used to um, torture people for thinking that the world was round. And people used to say religiously that the world was flat. You know, I think we're in exactly the same situation now where, you know, when I hear people like this Frank Close saying that, you know, these inventions aren't worth looking at because they don't speak our language. I mean, that's not science. That sounds like religion talking. That sounds like dogma and just repeating what someone's told him to how someone's told him to think, and he's just repeating it again. It just doesn't fit into the field of science. Science is, you know, someone invents something, they make a claim. Okay, so you you look at the device, you you, you prove that it doesn't work. If you know, put your money where your mouth is. If, if Frank Close thinks that this device doesn't work, then I'd like to see him with the device in a laboratory explaining to us why it doesn't work, but he, he would never do that. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Enjoy watching the documentaries in our playlist, in our free energy playlist, and also have a look at um, infinitychannel.com.au, which has a whole load of interesting videos about free energy and a whole load of other things as well. Goodbye.